Okay. So, how much do you know about Edoware to start off with? Nothing. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, before we get into things too deep, um, there is just one more little uh, ancillary system in the Hornet that uh, I'd like to take you through. Okay. And uh, it's called the FPAS page. Um, I'm not. Sounds interesting. I'm not 100% sure what the acronym actually stands for, but basically it's uh, a uh, range and endurance calculator. Okay, so, yep. So you access it on menu 2 on any screen. Menu and it's two. Uh, down the bottom. FPRS. FPAS. Got it, yep. Yep. So. When you bring it up, um, it's more useful in flight, but the top half of the screen gives you data on based on your current altitude and airspeed, right. and it will give you time until 2,000 pounds of fuel um, and distance. Okay. Uh, so there are two columns: there's range and endurance. So um, the top half will give you your current uh, range and endurance based on your airspeed, altitude, and fuel burn. Then it will give you your best Mac to fly uh, for range or endurance at your current altitude. Yep. Um, and if you have a navigation source selected, either TACAN or waypoints, it will also give you uh, the time until you reach it and the fuel remaining once you reach it. All right. This yep. can be very good for uh, fuel planning. Yep. Uh, and then the lower half of the screen is the optimum. So this is what the aircraft is calculated will give you the absolute best um, performance in either range or endurance. Yep. So currently we're looking at uh, for range if we want to go far. The jet wants us to climb to 34.4 thousand feet roughly fly at Mach 0.83 and uh, at least in my jet that will get me a range by the time I get to 2,000 pounds of 912 miles okay mine's a little bit different for some reason but okay now, you don't have a fuel tank on I do yeah all right um, I haven't put anything on yet eh? yeah no, okay. we'll, we'll go through that cool um, so basically it's weird, the, the, my number is actually higher than yours yeah, because you're lighter. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, and uh, all of these numbers are dynamically calculated. So um, if you're flying a particular profile, you'll notice as you burn fuel, the um, uh, altitude will increase and the Mach will slowly decrease. Right. Okay. Um, and the main and the difference between range and endurance is range is just go far in a straight line. Endurance is stay airborne the longest. Right. So, okay. uh, generally, endurance is flown much slower. So, you're not making as much distance, but mm. your time in the air will be maximized. Right. Yep. So, um, with the uh, air to ground stuff that we were doing before, uh, generally, if possible, when we're just doing those orbits and looking for targets, now we want to be flying at our best endurance speed for whatever altitude we're at, yep. and then we can, you know, push it up for weapons delivery, and then bring it back down once we're off. Right. Yep. So um, this is just something uh, to help you with your fuel planning, uh, and yep. uh, if we're flying as a flight, and lead says uh, fly your F pass, this is what he's talking about. So fly your best Ranger endurance. Okay. So, I think we'll start with a bit of an intro to weapons and then move on to the radar. How's that sound? Sounds good, yep. Cool. So, we'll pull up the rearming menu. Rearming. It's up, yep. So, um, how much do you know about the weapons themselves? No, I don't, I don't know much about weapons. Anything? So, yeah, you're just I'm hanging whatever. Side, side one is the only thing I've, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what do you know about the Sidewinder? Uh, it shoots forward, and I thought it was air to air. Correct. But I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <excellent. laughs> that's, um, that's it. So uh, we'll start at station one and move our way in. So okay. station one can yep. only carry Sidewinders. Um, yep. And you're right, they are air to air missiles. They yep. are a heat seeker missile, so they track the thermal signature of the target. Yep. Um, brevity code for launching one is FOX2. Alright, I'll try to remember that, but FOX2, okay. Yep, so FOX2 is I am launching a heat seeker. Okay. Um, they are completely fire and forget. Now, once they come off the rail, that's it, you've got no more control. Yep. Um, so uh, there's no way to abort them or anything if they right. go after the wrong target. Um, and especially on the older models, uh, basically the lower value letters, uh, it is entirely possible for them to switch targets mid-flight. <laughs> so um, if there are multiple aircraft ahead of you, um, or even uh, multiple just heat sources, um, you might launch at one and then mid-flight the missile jinx and goes after someone else. Right. Not your own, hopefully. Hopefully. And okay. uh, that's uh, part of the reason why we have the brevity codes, like FOX2 and etc. Because yeah. it gives everyone an idea of what's happening. And if someone calls FOX2 when there's a friendly in front of them, that friendly is going to have to break and dump flares pretty quickly if they don't want a very toasty ass. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, general nomenclature. Um, AIM is uh, Air Intercept Missile. Uh, oh, okay. 9 is the model, and the letter on the end is the model designator. So the higher value letter, basically further down the alphabet, the more yep. recent and generally more advanced the missile okay. is. So we've got three types on the Hornet. The L, so the Lima, Mike, and X-Ray. Yep. Uh, the Lima is a uh, sort of a, a Vietnam late Vietnam era missile. It's uh, fairly capable. Um, on paper, it's uh, all aspect in that you can, it will track a target from any angle, but uh, for best results, it's fired from behind the target. Okay. Uh, the M9 Mike is uh, sort of uh, Desert Storm era. Uh, more advanced seek ahead um, truly all aspect um, and uh, generally more uh, maneuverable yep. the A9X is the most modern uh, missile that we have at least for heat seekers and it is basically a laser basically a death ray right um, because unlike the other models the AIM-9X, so the other models have a gimbal, a seeker, seeker gimbal range of about 30 degrees. The AIM-9X, 80 degrees. Nice, okay. It's, uh, it's known as a high off foresight uh, capable missile. Okay, uh, so you don't have to be pointing directly at the, the baddie. No. Cool. Uh, the X-ray also has thrust vectoring. So while the mode is burning, it's using thrust vectoring as well as aerodynamics to nice. turn so yep. this thing can change direction incredibly quickly right that combined with the seeker and the software on board makes it extremely deadly and very difficult to decoy with flares right does so it a, the, can it tell the difference between the good and the bad no um, okay none no. of them has got that uh, general rule of thumb missilery does not carry IFF Okay. The launching unit will have the IFF, and yeah. it's up to them to decide what they launch at. Right. The missile just sees thing in front of me. I'm gonna go kill it. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, general rule of thumb: if the AIM-9X is available, take it. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and you would generally take them on both, um, both wingtips. The uh, fourth item in that list now the captive aim9m is a training round so it's an inert motor inert warhead 
but an active seeker. So it's essentially welded to the rail and just simulates uh, the real weapon for training oh. purposes. Okay, cool. I thought it fired off, it didn't explode, just hit off the side of the aircraft. <laughs> yep. nah, so, um, so you can always tell a training round from a live round because training oh, will have yeah blue okay. bands on them. Yep. Uh, live weapons have yellow bands. Okay. Yeah, uh, so if you're ever looking at uh, like uh, photos or videos of military aircraft, um, like uh, Hornet Vids is a good one. Uh, he's uh, a uh, U.S. Navy pilot that strapped a GoPro to his helmet and oh, yeah. uh, basically take an entire flight. Um, you uh, can have a look at the weapons on the jets and tell if they're live or not. Right. Um, and uh, I've seen a few that have. Uh, a yellow forward band and a blue rear band. Um, actually, no. Other way around. So, uh, yellow rear, blue forward. So that means yep. it's a live rocket, but a dummy warhead. All uh, right. So those are generally uh, live training rounds. So they do launch, but they don't go bang. Right. They just okay. punch a hole in the target, which is a lot easier to repair. Yep. It doesn't make the range officer angry. Nice. Nice. Uh, so yeah, generally, if it says captive and or is blue, yep. it's dummy. It doesn't actually go bang. Okay. So uh, if you want to put M9Xs on stations 1 and 9. 1 and 9, M9X, M9X, yep. Cool. And, uh, yeah, let's just go for a full on basic uh, Edward loadout. So on station 2. On 2. And, uh, AA missiles. We AA. have a lot more. In fact, I'm going to do. We'll actually go to station four. Uh, station four. Because most of that governs on station two was just double racks. Okay. So, under station four, we have two types. We have the AIM 120 and the AIM 7. Right. Oops. So, the AIM 120 is the AMRAM, which is the uh, all-seeing, all-dancing uh, missile that you've probably heard of before. Yep. Uh, this is a active radar uh, air-to-air missile. So the, uh, the missile itself has its own radar on board, and when it's launched, it can independently track and seek out its own target. Right. Uh, so, wait, so, so the Sidewinder you, you pick the target and fire, and then it'll stay on that target. Whereas yeah. this one here, you fire and it'll look for something. So, yeah, it can do both. So the sidewinder, yeah. you point it at something, launch it, and if all's yep. good, it will track and hit that thing. Yep. The AIM-120, um, depending on the range that you launch it at, so it's only got a small radar with about a 10 mile range. Okay. So if launched outside of 10 miles, Initially, the missile will data link with the host aircraft and piggyback off its own, off the aircraft's own radar. Mm -hmm. um, but then, once it reaches 10 miles to target, it turns on its own radar and searches for the target by itself. Right. And that's called going pitbull. Okay. Uh, because it's sort of letting the dog off the leash at that point. Right, yep. Um, uh, launching an active radar missile is preferably code FOX3. Right. And uh, these things can be very dangerous because, uh, again, missiles don't have IFF and uh, it will track the first thing that it sees. Right. So if the host aircraft still has the target locked on its own radar, it will pass that information onto the missile and tell it where to look. But it is still possible for uh, the missile to lock on to something else close by. Okay. Um, Fox 3 missiles generally have the highest range of any AWA missile. Um, the AIM-9 and other heat seekers are generally the shortest range. Uh, yep. So, AIM-9 is between one mile and maybe seven to ten miles if you're really, really lucky. Yep. Uh, the uh, main envelope for the AIM-120 is 
40 miles plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can reach out and touch people at long range. Uh, we have two variants available on the Hornet, the M120 Bravo and M120 Charlie 5. The M120 Charlie is a clipped wing version designed for the F-22 Raptor to be held in the internal bays. Um, yep. It also has a couple of other small uh, differences. Um, the uh, M120B has larger wings, um, but uh, can't fit in internal bays. But right. we don't have those, so we don't have to worry. Um, right. Because of its smaller wings, the Charlie variant can get up to a higher speed and therefore has a longer range. Oh. But because it's got smaller control surfaces, its terminal guidance suffers. Right. So okay. um, for absolute range, you would go for the Charlie variant. Yep. And, um, if you're expecting a maneuvering target, then you would go for the Bravo. Right. So that you can sort of turn and chase them a bit better. And, so we uh, just, yep. Yeah, go. Okay. I was going to say, so we're going to go just Bravos for now? Um, we'll take uh, the Bravos on the uh, pylon stations 2, 3, 7, and 8. Okay. And uh, we can also carry uh, multiple racks of the uh, AIM-9s and AIM-120s on those wing pylons. That's what all that Lao 115 is. Yep. Uh, what about, oh, don't select at the ground because then you'll be very confused. <laughs> uh. So we'll just go uh, Lao 115 with one times N120 Bravos, which is right at the top. Yep. And that's on two? Two, three, seven, and eight. Okay, all sorted. Cool. So if we come back to station four again, look yes. at the AWA missiles. The yep. AIM-7 is a semi-active radar missile. So um, it doesn't have its own radar on board. It is entirely reliant on the launching aircraft to yep. paint the target, essentially. Right. So um, similar to how our laser-guided bombs work, um, the uh, launching aircraft paints the target with radar, and then the missile will track that radar spot, essentially. Right. Same with, so same codes and everything? So you don't have to set up a code or anything, um, oh, okay. because it's not actually a laser, but it's right. the same principle. Okay, yep. So the, the host aircraft designates the target for the weapon. Right. Um, that uh, does mean that you have to hold and maintain that radar lock all the way until impact. Whereas with the AIM-120, once it goes pitbull, um, the launching aircraft can do whatever else it wants. Okay. Um, however, uh, the it does mean that uh, if you need to uh, abort the missile um, with the AIM-7, you can just break the lock at any time before impact, and the yep. missile, missile will just go stupid. Right, okay. Uh, so uh, it's actually a... Uh, fairly popular missile in um, uh, modern, certainly uh, uh, Gulf War era conflicts because yep. it is able to be aborted. Um, right. The uh, AIM-7 itself was uh, first in, uh, saw combat in Vietnam. Um, it was uh, one of the first types of air-to-air -air missiles designed, actually. Right. Um, and is also BVR capable, which is beyond visual range, same as the M120. So yep. it's possible to engage targets without ever seeing them with the naked eye. Okay, yep. As long as the aircraft can keep a lock on it. Yep. Correct. Yep. Um, as for the different models, Foxtrot, Mike, Microtel, and Papa, 
Now, it is pretty much just a straightforward improvement down the line. Okay. Um, uh, Cooper and I did uh, a bit of testing, and the uh, AIM-9P is pretty much the same as the AIM-9MH, just with uh, better avionics. Papa sounding good. Yeah, so we'll take Papa on 4 and 6. 4 and 6. And uh, you'll notice that the AIM-7 is also slightly bigger than mm. the AMRAM, um, so you can only take it on single racks on the wings. Right, yep. Cool. And then station five will take a fuel tank, just so we have some gas to play with. Fuel it is, and I've got my blue smoke. Yeah, and uh, I'll take, well, I'll just take red smoke. Nice. Request refueling. Uh, Request refueling. Fuel, uh, flares up to Copy. 70. Yeah, it sounds about right. And okay there. So while the crew chief is bolting all of those on, uh, we'll just set up the rest of our systems. So do you remember where your RWR controls were? So I do, down between my legs here. Yep. Is that what we're talking about? Yep. I've switched it on and the second from the left is on. Second from the left or second from the right? Uh, second from the left. Now, uh, you want to turn that one off and go second from the right. Two from the right. Yep. So enable offset must be off and mm -hmm. second room. So display must be on. Yep, display limit is on. Oh, right, so okay. so that will uh, show us only the top six most important contacts. So right. we don't get an overly cluttered display. Yep. And if we have a lot of contacts run right on top of each other, then we would use the offset. Rearming complete. Okay. Uh, to spread them out so we can see what they are. That's it, okay, yep. Uh, um, the dispenser set to on. On. And that's all I've done down there. And ECM, you can come up to uh, REC. Okay. Coolio. So uh, ECM was already on REC, is that all right? Yep, that's fine. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, we won't bother with uh, countermeasure programs today. Yeah, uh, okay. Because uh, nothing's going to be launching back at us. Um, we don't need flare on. We don't need any of that stuff. Um, nah, no, not no, really. We don't have anything under there? Cool. Uh, um, so now uh, to actually select these weapons, uh, you use the uh, weapon select switch on the stick, which is that thumb switch about halfway down. So I keep pressing by mistake all the time. Yep. Yep. So forward selects. Aim sevens, aft selects gun, uh, in or um, or left. I forget how you've set it up. Selects um, aim nines, heat seekers, and then right selects gun. Sorry, right selects um, M120s. You're good? Oh, uh, my thing seemed to time out. My, my <laughs> ever pressed talk button. Ah. Um, so just confirming, so uh, if I push the thumbstick forward, I yep. get locked at the bottom? Yep, so, and uh, just above lock is a crossed out MP, or 7P. Uh, 7P2, yep. yep. So that tells you where uh, you've got uh, AIM-9, or rather AIM-7 puppers selected, and you currently have two of them on board. Okay. And they are in loft mode. All right, pulling back. And you've gone quiet again. For some reason, my uh, talk thing's timing out, even though I've got my switch up. Yeah, so Discord can't tell the difference between different devices. It just knows, like, 
button five somewhere uh, has been pressed. So R uh, must be the same button number as that uh, sketch of yours. Shit. Okay, I'll try listening after that. Yeah. So yeah, right, aft so is gun. Aft is gun. Uh, pushing left, there's nothing. Nothing's yep. happening. Yep, that's and fine. Pushing right looks like something D4. Um, so that's A, B, 4. Um, Amram, Bravo, 4 of them. Okay, yep. yep. Uh, and that's it. Those and then the press it down, in, to, in towards the stick. 9X. Yep. And, and annoyed. Annoyed. Yep. Yeah. So that tone is the uh, seeker tone of the uh, of the missile. Right. Uh, so that lets you know uh, whether it sees anything or not. And uh, once we get airborne, you'll uh, uh, hear different tones. So when it's uh, when it sees a heat signature, but uh, isn't currently tracking, uh, you'll get a dit 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 sort of sound. Right. Um, if you then now press your uncaged switch, which is the uh, red switch on your throttle aft, uh, it will uncage the seeker uh, and will start tracking the target by itself. And yep. then the tone will go to a screech. And at that point, you can freely launch the missile and it should kill that target. Okay, and missiles are launched uh, trigger finger or still weapon trigger. release? Okay, trigger. So, uh, US Navy aircraft, forward firing air-to-air -air weapons, are all fired with the trigger. Okay, sounds easy. Everything else is weapons release. Right, yep. Cool. And you will have noticed that when you press um, any of those switches, your screen's changed. Yeah. So, yep. um, whenever you select an air-to-air -air weapon, it automatically sets the jet up in air-to-air -air mode, pulls up the stores page, or if it's active, uh, a uh, FLIR pod, Right. on the left screen, and the right screen goes to the attack radar. Right. So, now we'll go through the attack radar screen. Just to confirm, left left movement on my thumb button does nothing, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Because um, if you look at the stick in the aircraft itself, yep. um, that switch has that uh, those grooves on top, and they go sideways. Right. So it would be very difficult to pull the switch to the left, your thumb will just slide off it. Right, okay. Um, I think in the real jet, actually, it s simply does not move to the left. Right. And then one, one, one more little question, this is just a pet peeve. Sometimes I hit that button by mistake, and the only way I, it puts you into air to air all the time, mm -hmm. and the only way to get out is to find my uh, mouse and go and click the air to air. Is there a way that I can switch off that and go back to... Is, is there a button somewhere? No? No. No. Okay. No, cool. To switch out of air to air, you have to hit the air to air button. Okay, cool. No yeah. problems. Um, you can hit the air to ground button and go straight into air to ground if that's where you want to be. Yep. Um, or just click off air to air to go back to nav mode. Yeah, okay, cool. Something I recently learned about the uh, Strike Eagle actually is. Um, you can customize which screens pop up in each master mode. Oh, nice. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But uh, not in this aircraft, unfortunately. Yep. So, uh, the uh, radar scope is probably uh, really big and scary, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Uh, so, we'll just go uh, one by one around the different uh, button options, and then we'll talk about the scope itself. Okay. Actually, reverse that. We'll talk about the scope first. Uh, scope meaning what's in front of me? Yeah, so... Yeah. No, scope meaning the uh, main display on the radar itself. Main... Oh, so what if it's in my right-hand screen at the moment? Yeah, in that yep. box. So, okay. um, the uh, radar screen is displayed in, in what's known as a B-scope, which is essentially taking the... Um, 140 degree azimuth sweep of our radar and crunching it out into a square so rather than being a wedge it's sort of crunching in the top and expanding out the bottom to make it 
a straight square. Does it make sense? A little bit, yep, yep. Yeah, it, it is kind of, yep. kind of funky. Um, but uh, essentially, left and right on the screen is um, different degrees left and right of the nose. Okay. And uh, the tick marks, you now those vertical tick marks along the top and bottom, are 40, 60 degrees, and then the far edge is 70 degrees, right. with zero being in the middle. Yep. Uh, that uh, line going up the middle is the, uh, the sweep bar, so that tells you the exact azimuth the radar antenna is in currently. So um, because we're on the ground, it's currently locked forward. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you see that uh, big cross-looking thing in the bottom left, that's yep. known as the iron cross, and that uh, is, that symbol lets you know that the radar is currently in silent mode, so it's not uh, emitting any energy. Okay. Um, and then uh, vertically on the scale is range. So in the top right corner, you'll see a 40. Yep. So that's the current maximum display range that we have selected, cycled with the uh, two arrows just underneath it. Yep. It can go out to 160 miles total. All right, yep. Uh, and then it will yep. cycle back down to five, and 10, 20 and so on. Yep. Back so 40. Yep. in all scales under, sorry, in all scales, 20 and above, um, it's broken up into uh, quarters, so in the 40 mile scale, we've got 10, 20, 30, and then the top of the screen is 40 miles, Yep. and then that little thin rectangle at the very top of the screen is known as the dugout, and this is where contacts that are denying you range information will show up. All oh, right. Jamming targets. Okay. So, on older radars, like in the F-15, um, if a target is jamming, uh, what it's essentially doing is giving you false information about its range. So you know something is there, but you don't know how far away it is because yep. your scope shows basically a ladder of contacts all along the same bearing. Right. Yep. So the Hornet's radar is a bit smarter than that. So it sees that ladder sort of return, and it goes, ah, that guy's jamming. I'm not going to clutter up the main screen, so I'm just going to shove him up here in the, in the dugout. OK, yep. So that way you can still tell his range, or rather his azimuth, but not his range. OK, so if something appeared above that uh, dash uh, one right from the center, yeah, and it's inside that box there, you know that's something that's 30 degrees ahead of you, yep. but you don't know how far it is. It could be close, it could be miles away, or it could be up to 40 away. Is uh, that right? It could be any range. Even more. Uh, um, right, okay, yep. Because uh, the range scale selection um, is just what the screen displays. The radar right. is always searching out to as far as it can see, yep. but you choose how far you're looking at. Okay, yep. So um, that uh, that can be something to keep in mind because uh, because of uh, attenuation, you can always detect a radar emission uh, coming from someone else at a further range than they can detect you. So um, if you can think about it like an echo, so you can hear someone clap their hands or shout out at a yep. much greater distance than they could ever hear an echo come back. Yep. Uh, and that's the same principle with radar and sonar, actually. Okay, yep. So, if you want to be sneaky, um, you have to keep in mind that just because you can't detect anything on your radar doesn't mean there's someone there that's getting, uh, that's detecting your radar energy. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's what the RWR does. It senses those incoming radar uh, radar beams um, yep. and classifies them and shows them in azimuth. Yeah, okay. Cool. So, 
that's pretty much the scope. Um, so wait, just to put that shortly, uh, you, you can detect them scanning you before they realize they're scanning you. Yeah, so yeah. No, you yeah. can detect them scanning you before you will show up on their radar screen. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Because basically, the radar sends out the pulse, and that pulse has to then bounce off something and then come yeah. all the way back. It's kind of dissipating on the way back. Yeah, yeah okay. it, it dissipates on the way out and yep. the way back. Got it, yep. So, like, um, just putting some arbitrary numbers on this, if you put out a pulse at, say, 100 watts, and it goes one mile, hits something and comes back, it probably hits them with like one watt of power. Yep. And by the time it gets back to you, it's like at 0.1 watts yeah. out of that initial 100. Mm -hmm. So, now moving on around the scope. Now, so if we start up in the top left on the top row, now you see four B1. Yep. So this is the bar scan. So the radar does, doesn't just search left and right. Now the antenna can tilt up and down as well to search higher or lower than the aircraft's current altitude. Yep. And we can we use this bar scan setting to determine the pattern that it searches. So uh, I believe it's a 10 degree vertical slice is each bar so with four bar scan each time it, the antenna changes direction so it comes left it goes back to the right and back left back to the right each time it changes direction it will change bar scan so coming left scanning the bottom first bar then comes back to the right scanning the second then up to the third on the way back and the fourth, and back to the first. Okay. So, um, each altitude bar only gets one scan um, in one direction. Right. So, this allows you to search a larger uh, patch of sky ahead of you, um, but it also takes longer to search more bars. Yep, okay. Now, and you can set it Anywhere from one bar to six bars. And six bars is like stupid high. Right. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get into um, what settings you want to use which a little bit later. But uh, moving on to the right, SIL. This is the silent button. Yep. So. What this does is, um, if the radar is currently operating normally and you don't want it to, you can hit the silent button and it will stop emitting. Right. And uh, it's just a uh, sort of a quick way to um, shut the radar off without actually turning it off. Okay. Yep. Um, I've never had to use it in DCS because uh, we don't really use those sorts of tactics because yep. uh, we can't get any information on them because they're still secret. Nice. Okay. Um, moving on, erase. Now, yep. so if the red arrow is getting really cluttered now with tracks, you can hit erase, and all of them go away until they're detected again. Okay. Yep. All right. Moving on. So we've also got our uh, TDC diamonds in the top right. Yep. Uh, and then if you use your TDC control, you can slew that yellow cursor around. Oh, indeed. Yep. Yep. So, this is your TDC cursor, and this is what you use to uh, interact with uh, targets on the scope. And you'll see two numbers, one above, one below. I think you hit your PTT again. Uh... No, there you go. Next, yep. So yeah, those numbers tell you the minimum and maximum altitude that the radar can see at the current range the cursor is at. So, for example, if you bring it down to uh, about halfway down the scope, so that, yep. that would be 20 miles. Um, what numbers do you see there? Five minus five. Yep. So that means the uh, 
the aircraft can see up to a maximum of 5,000 feet and a minimum of negative 5,000 feet, basically, from, your, from below your ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it's uh, absolute altitudes, not relative to your current altitude. Right, okay. Um, so, uh, you can either change your bar setting, so if you come up to that uh, top left and change the bar scan size, you can see those numbers change. Yes. So, if you know how high a bad guy is and you're trying to find him, you can either change the bar scan setting to make sure the radar can scan his altitude, yep. or you can leave the bar scan the same and use the radar elevation control, the same one you're using to zoom the T-Pod, to actually move the radar antenna up and down. Right. Uh, it's it's uh, quite sensitive, but uh, if you just uh, tap that control, you can see the numbers changing. Yeah. One thing that confuses me is, as you move it up, is that saying that the radar is pointing higher? No. So, no, 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 no. Uh, okay. the radar scans in essentially a cone. And the mm -hmm. further out you go, the wider the cone gets. Okay. So, uh, the greater the range, uh, the higher and lower the radar can see at a given elevation. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, and if you look on the... Now, uh, left, um, right in the middle, you'll see a little chevron, a little carrot. Yes. And that is a representation of your current antenna elevation. So, okay. right in the middle is dead level with the horizon. Yep. And then it uh, doesn't seem to be moving now currently because we're on the ground. But um, once we're airborne, you'll be able to see that jumping around. Right. Yep. I'm just gonna, I, I, I think I've missed something because <coughs> I've suddenly lost what the pictures were looking at. So in front of us, the further up, so if, if a dot appeared on the screen and it yeah. wasn't in the, what do you call it, the holding box? The dugout. The dugout. So if it was inside the, the, the main area somewhere. The main scope. Yep. And let's say it's uh, directly on in the middle, um, mm -hmm. uh, laterally, but vertically. In fact, let's say it's right in the middle of the screen. Yeah. So, I'm trying to work out what that's telling me. That's telling me that something's dead ahead of me, straight ahead. Yep. But I, I'm, I'm a bit lost on the cone, because does that mean he's also at 20 miles? Correct. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, right. if you're in a 40 mile range, yep. and he's halfway down the scope, yep. then he's at 20 miles, or half your selected range, precisely. Okay. Right, okay. And, and yes, dead in the middle is dead ahead of the nose. Yep. Okay, so our nose is basically at the bottom in the middle. Correct. Yeah, okay, got it, yeah, yeah. So and you can't see anything behind you. It's no. So the, it's the maximum azimuth of our radar is yep. 140 degrees, or yep. 70 degrees left yep. and right. right. Got it, yeah, okay, yep. excellent, yep. Yep, so, yeah, I think you've got it. Yep. And then, um, once there is a contact, um, it will also give us his uh, altitude and MAC, and his heading. Yep. Uh, right. We'll, we'll oh. see that a bit later, um, yep. once we actually get the screen populated. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think you've got it for now. All right, yep. So we've covered arrays, we've covered range. Now uh, halfway down on the right side, we've got set. Yes. So um, all of these different settings, um, they come with defaults for each weapon. Um, I think they're pretty well all identical, except for the gun, um, by default. But uh, you can freely set them up however you like for each weapon, and then hit set. And then whenever you select that weapon again, uh, the radar will automatically go back to those settings. So for example, for an AMRAM, if we go right on the weapon control switch, um, by default it set us to a 40 mile scan at two bars. Um, say I don't like that, say I want a 160 mile scan at four bars. 
I can just set the radar up like that with AMRAM selected, hit set, and once the box goes away, then next time I select AMRAM, that's how the radar is going to be. Right, that's it, yep. Yeah. And uh, we'll uh, put that to very good use here in a second um, after we've gone through here. Yep. Then below that reset, we'll revert it back to those initial defaults. Okay, yep. Um, next one down on the right is currently boxed NCTR. Yep. And this is a pretty cool system. So this is, that stands for non cooperative target recognition. So this is a, uh, a form of IFF completely separate from the uh, IFF transponders. So um, the basic gist of how transponders work, actually you probably know this from FSX and such, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, ping out, who are you? Hey, I'm this. Yep. If they don't say, hey, I'm this, the NCTR system will use the actual radar in our jet to analyze his jet or his aircraft and try oh, and yeah. figure out what and therefore who he is. That's pretty cool. And... Um, <laughs> The information on this is a bit uh, bit sparse, as yeah. you would expect, but from yeah. what I can gather, mainly from WAGS, it's able to look down his intakes and count oh, yeah. the revolutions of his fan blades. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Therefore, identify his engine yeah. and classify his jet. Nice. <laughs> which is bonkers. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, just from the radar itself, we are able to tell the difference between, like, a Hornet and a Fulcrum. Nice. <laughs> it just blows my mind. Yeah. Um, but it only works at fairly close range. I think now uh, within about 20 miles. Um, cool. yeah. And he has to be pointing at you so you can see down his intakes. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a completely passive system. Um, there is no detriment to having it on whatsoever. So, and I'm pretty sure it's always on by default anyway. Right. Um, but it's just a really awesome system. <laughs> mm. uh, next, now uh, we've got a uh, a 150, sort of hanging out there in the in the corner. Yep. That's our current barometric altitude. And then if we scoot over to the left, we've got M 0.1. Yep. So that's our current mark. Yep. So, um, similar to the T-Pod, how it uh, had some basic aircraft data repeated like that, so does mm -hmm. the radar. Okay. So, as your head's down searching for targets, you can glance at these from time to time and just double check that you know, you know, you're not diving straight towards the ground by accident. Yep. And I then, do uh, data, if we box that, we get... Uh, some extra options pop up. Yep. Uh, pretty much the only two options you may want to ever change are halfway up on the right, color. Yep. If you unbox that, everything just goes the same shade of green. Oh, yep. Um, I obviously like the different colors, they're very yep. useful. Mm -hmm. um, and then up the only option along the top row, current four, that is the track file aging setting. So Wait, I'm not that. on no? the top row? No, I've only got an eight in the top right, nothing else. Okay. Yeah, so that that's what I'm talking about. It's a it's a four okay. for me for some reason. Okay. Yep. So this is how many seconds um, the jet will essentially save a contact for uh, before deleting it unless it's detected again. Oh, okay. So, and it's uh, used to cut down on clutter. So, yep. um, if during a sweep, the radar detects something, but then never again, you'll basically get a blip that shows up, and then after that number of seconds, the lapses, it'll disappear again. Okay, yep. But if within that time it's detected again, it's now uh, data will be updated and the time will reset right yep. so basically if it's a real contact it'll stay put 
if it's spurious, it'll go away. Okay, yep. Um, although, uh, there may be times, uh, say you're searching a very large volume of sky, you know, lots of bars, lots of azimuth, so it takes a long time to cover the entire volume, yep. or you're searching at a really long range, or something else, it might be difficult to uh, hold the contact um, within that time, so you would up the aging setting so that uh, the tracks stay for longer. Right, yep. Um, but in a busy environment, you'll basically just get overloaded, so you want a smaller aging setting. Um, okay. I've never had to actually change it. Um, I think four to eight is generally uh, good enough. Yep. Um, and uh, the way I use the radar, um, I don't uh, actually search the entire volume at any one time, because um, that just takes way too long. And I'll teach you that a bit later on. Cool. Um, uh, there's also, down the bottom, uh, declutter 2. Is that next to the data? I've got the uh, declutter TR1. Yep. So uh, this is the declutter level of the radar scope. Okay. So, um, if you click it so that the box disappears. Yes. So, now we've got that same sort of horizon and velocity vector that we had on the teapot. Yep. Uh, but being right in the middle of our radar scope, it can uh, get a bit distracting sometimes. Yes. So, you know, we go to declutter to get rid of that. Yep. And then declutter 2 removes... Um, few other things that I don't remember, but um, I never actually really touch any of these settings anyway, but it's good okay. to know they're here. Yep. And then um, just to the left of menu, uh, currently boxed is BRA, or BRA. Yep. Yep. Um, this is those uh, numbers that we can't quite see because of that iron cross symbol, but uh, these tell you the current bearing and range of your cursor wherever it is on the scope. Nice, okay. Um, and this can be quite useful, because um, uh, if you pick up a target and you're part of a flight, you can just cursor over him and say, hey, flight lead, I've got uh, Bandit at 2.98 for 118. Yep. And you can pass that data along immediately. So I would have expected if I put it dead in the middle. Yeah that that would have said the same as my current heading but it's 10 degrees out so is one of them true and one of them's not magnetic one yeah. of them will be true one of them will be magnetic okay so yeah the yep. uh bra numbers down the bottom left are in true yep. the heading at the top um, and on your um, heading tape are in magnetic currently. okay um, i can yep. teach you how to change that actually oh yeah um, if if you want later on okay now uh, but yeah, if for some reason you don't want those bra numbers there, it would come into here and unbox bra. Right, okay. But again, they're incredibly useful. I don't know why you would turn them off. Yep, yep. So then if we come back out of data. Yes. Um, next option to the left is Chan. Um, this is something that, again, you know, black briefcase stuff that we don't have to worry about. Yep. <laughs> Essentially, okay. um, the way I would think it works is um, each radar would work on a different channel so that it doesn't get confused with um, radar returns from other flights. Yeah, yep. Similar to working on a different laser code, I would right. imagine. Yeah, I don't want your returns if we're flying information. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, and then moving across to the other side of menu, uh, 140 degrees. Yep. This is the current total azimuth the radar is going to scan. Yep. Um, so currently it's set to basically the maximum, so it'll yep. go all the way left and all the way right. Yep. But because uh, it's a physical antenna moving left and right, it takes time. Mm -hmm. So you can select it down to as little as 20 degrees. So it's just bouncing back and forth really, really quickly. Yep. And searching a very narrow strip of sky. And then okay. 40, 60, 80, and back to 140. Right. Um, yeah. So um, 
the uh, the very basic, easy way to use this radar is to have it basically scan as big a portion of the sky as possible. Um, and that's the very basic, lazy way to use it. Um, I'll teach you an even better way here in a sec. Excellent. Uh, mode, we don't need to worry about. Okay. And then coming up to the left side, um, high int or intel. Yep. So uh, the radar works with uh, a parameter called pulse repetition frequency. Um, physics, I guess. Yep. But the long and short of it is um, a high PRF is better at detecting targets at long range that are yeah. flying straight at you. Okay. Medium PRF is doesn't have as much range, but is better at detecting targets that are doing anything but flying straight at you. Okay. So if you're searching really far out, you want high PRF. Now, uh, if you're searching really close in, uh, you want medium PRF. And what the radar is currently set to is interly, which is every time it changes direction, as well as changing bar scan, it changes PRF. Right. So, say coming left, it'll search in high, then when it bounces back right, it goes to medium. Okay. So, if we hit PRF now, it'll come down to just medium. Oh, yeah, yep. And then high, and then back yep. to interleave. Right here. And next one up, we don't have to worry about. And oh. All the way at the top of the left, now uh, RWS is the current search mode. So this is range while search. Now uh, this is your basic uh, radar mode. So uh, as its name would suggest, while searching, it's giving you target range. Um, good. Very good. Um, and if you were to cursor over a target and TDC depress, it will single target track him which is basically hard lock okay so um you know putting all of its radar energy into tracking just this one guy um and it gives the most accurate uh solution on him so you know exactly where he is how he's moving and your weapons will be the most accurate yep. but it also tells him what you're doing right <laughs> so um i don't think you've Actually, yeah, that all that beeping yesterday while yes. I was behind you. Yep. That is now your RWR telling you that you're being hard locked by someone. Okay. And to watch out. Yep. So when you do that to someone, that's what they hear. And that can be good, but not if you're trying to be sneaky. Right. Yep. Which is why if we hit that button next to RWS. Goes to TWS, Twiz, yep. track while scan, which is a much more powerful mode. Yeah. Um, and you uh, may have noticed a couple of things changed around the screen, and we'll go into that. So what track while scan does is um, when you click on a target, rather than hard locking him, it hooks him, which is simply software based. So the actual radar energy coming out of your jet doesn't change. Mm -hmm. um, you've basically told the computer, hey, I'm interested in this guy, prioritize tracking him. Okay. Um, so now the radar computer has limitations. It can only track so many targets at once. So um, while you're in uh, range while search, um, you uh, you can basically have the maximum number of tracked targets on screen at once. Track while no. scan can't handle as many targets, but it can hook multiple of them and actually right. build a targeting solution on them without hard locking them. Okay. And so you're more quiet. Yeah. So yep. they have no idea that they're being locked. They know you're there because they can detect your radar energy, but yep. they don't know what you're doing with it. Okay. And coupled with um, a Fox 3 missile like the AMRAM, it is very powerful because the AMRAM can be launched on a track while scan target 
and the bad guy has no idea it's happened. Right. And the jet is current is constantly updating that track file, sending that information onto the missile. Okay. So that once it turns its radar on, it knows where to look. Yeah. So all that guy knows is suddenly there's a missile looking at him, which is already within 10 miles at Mac whatever, and yeah. it's about to kill him. Nice. As opposed okay. to us having to hard lock him from 40 miles out and then launching a missile and then guiding it in, which would yep. give him progressive alerts at each stage. Right. Okay. That's going to kill me a few times, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a couple of things that have changed. Um, in the top center, uh, where in range war search it was a race, yep. now it's hits, which yep. is currently boxed. So, uh, in range war search, a uh, radar contact would show up as just a brick or a hit, which is just a block says like hey there's something here yep now uh, in track while scan we get what's known as a hafu um, hostile ambiguous friendly unknown which is a um, collection of symbols to uh, denote uh, contacts or units and whether they're friendly or not right so each one has a different shape and we'll go through those now once we can actually see them but uh, they're basically more sophisticated than just simple hits. Yep. But with hits boxed, we will still get them showing up. So we've got the sophisticated sig symbols and then the raw radar data on top of them. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so you can sort of uh, you know, double check things are working properly. Because if you get a hafu and the hit is somewhere else nearby, then there's something wonky going on with your system. But if they're right on top of each other, then you know everything's working right. Okay, yep. Uh, raid, I don't know. Never had to use it. Cool. Um, halfway down on the right, auto and man is currently boxed. Yep. Uh, so uh, when you've got uh, a hafu hooked, if you box auto, the radar will change basically the center point of its scan volume to favor that hit. Okay. So rather than being centered on your aircraft where it's pointing, it'll basically prioritize looking at him in the middle of its field of view. No matter what you do or what he does. So that if you're flying, Hold say, on. straight west, and you look a guy 30 degrees off to the right, or hook a guy 30 degrees off to the right yeah. and box auto, the radar will change the center of its scan volume to favor that 30, 30 degrees right. And then if you then turn north, it will slew you around to the left to keep it in its center of field of view. Right. Um, yes. And that way, you don't have to uh, manage things to keep it uh, updating that track file. Um, but uh, the downside of it is with auto box you can no longer manually change your radar elevation oh. so if you don't have anything boxed make sure you switch it back to manual right okay and we've got reset NCTR and everything else is normal cool okay back to is it range with scan uh, we'll leave it in track while scan okay um, Actually, yes, back to Range Wall Search. There we go. Okay. And there is one other radar page that we can use. Um, make sure your air to air mode is still on. It is on, yep. Cool. So on the left screen, if we go out to menu one. Menu one. In the bottom left, on the left column, we've got um, AZ slash EL, ASL. Yep, yep. If we box that, brings up another scary page. So this is the same radar, just presented differently. So rather than vertically being range, it is now elevation. It's as if you're staring straight out the nose of the aircraft. Yeah. Um, and there are all sorts of other weird and cool things that this can do that I have no idea about. There is only one thing that we have to worry about here. 
yeah. and that is that exact same button that we just hit, which is auto int. If you box yep. that, uh, yep. now the uh, transponder on board our aircraft will automatically interrogate any target it sees. That sounds pretty good. Yep. So Lines are appearing and disappearing, but that's cool. Yep, that's completely fine. So now we don't have to worry about manually IFFing anything. Right. So I'm intrigued to see how it's going to appear on the screen. Yeah. So you can now come back out of Azzle page and probably just go back to stores. Yep. So I think that's about it. Wow. Okay, I it. reckon about 20% 20, 20 of that sunken. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. Yep. And we haven't even started talking tactics yet. So wait, Fox, uh, just uh, going back quickly, uh, Fox 2 was for um, was for heat seeking. Yep. Fox 3 was for uh, radar. Active radar, yep. Active radar. And you didn't say what the, fo was, is Fox 4 for the semi-active? Uh, Fox 1 is semi-active, okay. Got it. Yep. Uh, Fox 4 no longer exists. It oh, used okay. to mean guns, but now Good. it just say guns. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so semi-active, uh, radar, Fox 1? and then active. Fox so it's going upwards. Yeah, okay. Yep. Sure. So... Let's get airborne and start putting some of this into practice. I'll follow Honestly. you to the left. Okay, to the left. Interesting. Uh. The um, single rack AMRAMs on the wings still include the double rack, they just haven't put both missiles on. Uh -huh. That's weird. Normally they would uh, just bolt the missile straight onto the pylon. Just confirm, is this our turn or we continue? Continue. Okay. And uh, we're going to climb straight up to about 30,000 feet. 30, all right. At about Mac 0 0.7. 0 0.7 up to 30. Right, indicator run. <laughs> also, make sure your seat is on. Seat on, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, tech in and the link. On, I believe, uh, double checking, tech and on, dead link, on. Cool. Clear on the left. Make it clear left and clear right. All right, up to Eddie. Two. 
Backs off. Auf der Banner. Nice having a light jet for once. Hmm. Yeah, that did get up quick. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it did not go up. I've lost my door now. Probably. Yeah. There you go. Didn't say Mach point six. Yep. And barometric could probably be better. Going up to thirty thousand. Yeah. So if you look on your radar scope now. Yes. You see that uh, circle with a stick on it? I see it. So that is a hafu. Okay. Specifically, one that represents a friendly. So friendlies are green and circles or arcs. Yeah. Uh, hostiles are red chevrons or diamonds uh, and unknowns or ambiguous are yellow and generally diamonds as well right so mine changed away from a circle because i noticed that my little uh, line was just doing 40. Mm -hmm. i changed change it to 60 when it crossed over that circle it's changed to across is that okay uh, now it's gone back to a circle. That's weird. If I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a little cross. So um, it's uh, probably not actually being painted by your radar. Uh, because you have your data link on, you're receiving data from other aircraft, yeah. specifically that uh, AWACS that I just launched, which is what that circle is. Okay. Um, and you can tell he's an AWACS. Uh, because of that little dot on the left in the dot in the center yep so the dot on the left tells you that this particular hafu is providing you with um, dead link information and the dot in the center tells you that this particular contact is a surveillance aircraft or an AWACS okay uh, you might want to push it down to about five degrees climb about five. And uh, that little stick coming out of him is telling you uh, which direction he's moving. Right. Okay, so he's he'll cross in front of us at some point. At some point, if yeah. But he's like 50 degrees off to our left. Yep. Um, so uh, we'll probably cross in front of him. Uh, you're at Mac point six, yeah. Uh, my number's gone a bit weird. It's it's a um, Mac point six five. No, let me come down a bit. Strange. I looked at it at six. Probably because we climbed. Two. Well, oh. okay. That's just your comms. I'm not blasting past you. We're, we're good. That's me at Mac point six. Sweet. 24,000. Awesome. And you don't have to worry about smoke because you're making a contrail. Nice! Ah, I know why it changed to a cross when uh, the thing passed over it. So you got a uh, radar hit from him. And uh, because it was a new hit, it gave you that cross over the top of it. Right, okay.
it once you're at thirty thousand yep level off and start a nice lazy left hand turn on autopilot all right and we'll just hang around up here and go through the radar wait a second what do you mean uh, on autopilot i haven't i haven't used it before can i set a heading select um so uh you can just do um uh, barometric altitude hold. Yep. Uh, and if you're uh, in a bank um, greater than five degrees, when you activate it, it'll hold that bank angle for you. Okay. Jeez. Uh, also, we're slowing down a lot, so push it up. Uh, push it up. I've still got Mach 0.62 though. Uh, maybe it's just me that was slowing down. Uh, what was FSA? We should be at. Six three, yeah, that'll do. Up to six three? Yep. Wow, that's just slow. Ah, that's why my flaps came down. That'll do it. Yep. I'm at okay, point six three and thirty thousand, so starting a left turn. Yep. Uh w which heading did we want? Uh so we're just uh, an orbit. Oh right, okay. So set uh attitude hold? A barometric altitude hold, and it'll also hold the bank angle for you. Uh, okay, there we go. Sweet. Okay. Let's cut inside your turn. That's weird. From what I can see here, your contrail is in front of you. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> it just, just looks a bit weird. Okay. What you were probably seeing was the bloom from my lights. Right, okay, yeah. So, currently, uh, what's your radar set to for range, bars, and azimuth? Uh, I think my ra so range is top right, is that right? 40? Yep. The 40 miles up ahead, and the, uh, did you say azimuth is currently on 60? Yep, and number of bars, top left. Top left, number, uh, is it 4B? 4B. 4B. Uh, four 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yeah, I see it counting up and down. Okay. And uh, do you currently have uh, a weapon selected? Uh, I do not have any weapon selected at the moment. Okay. So uh, select AMRAMs for me. AMRAM is, is that right? Right. Uh, right on the stick. Cool. Really, I'll have lost my thing. Yep. Cool, and uh, we'll uh, leave Master Arm off for now. Yep. So, what I'll get you to do is put the scale to 80, bars to 40, and azimuth to 40 as well. Okay, so sca is scale out in front of us? Yep. So, which is 40, so that's so at 80 now? Yep. Up to 80, yep. Bars to 4? Yep. Yeah, that seems to be scanning the whole thing now. Nice. And yeah. that's 140 Azimuth at the bottom. to 40. Uh, so down to 40, yep. Cool. So now it's just little movements, left to right. Yep. And now you're going to box set on the right. Box set on the right. Boxed. Uh, also, uh, in the bottom left, now uh, you've set your PRF to high. PRF. It's flashing high to medium to high. Yeah, so that's currently an interleaved. Now I press twice into high. Set to high, yep. yep. Press set again? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then select uh, Sparrows, uh, M7s, forward. M7 is forward. I might lose sound for a second. Hang on. You still got sound? Yep. yep I think cool. it's aft guns okay. which does it. Right. So uh, you're going to select. Now, range 40, bars still 4, azimuth still 4, and PRF to high. PRF to high. Um, sorry, the bottom the bottom one's still at 80, should that be at 40? 40. Uh, okay. And set. Oh, we've got something coming towards us. Um, that's just the AWACS. Okay. There are no hostiles currently. 
and uh, right. your PRF to high. PRF is high. Yep, and box set again. Box set again. Yep. Cool. And then uh, down or in for sidewinders. It's making a noise. Yep. Yep. And you're gonna go range ten. Bars six. Ten bars six. Yep. Azimuth twenty. Oh. Yep. And PRF medium. All right. Set. Set. And now you can go back to AMRAMS to get rid of that noise. Okay. AMRAMS is forward, eh? Yep. Uh, AMRAMS is right. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then you can hit uh, RWS to go into track while scan. Good. Cool. So now all your weapons are set up how I personally like them. So uh, you're searching a fairly narrow but still usable piece of sky, 40 degrees left and right. Yep. Um, and uh, the range setting is optimized for each weapon. So, AMRAMs are searching out to 80 miles. Uh, AIM-7s are searching out to 40. And Sidewinders are 10. Right, okay. So now, uh, now that we're in trackball scan, you'll notice the uh, azimuth line is just bouncing back and forth around the middle. Yep. If you slew your cursor around so that it's um, off to one side and click, Oh yeah. You notice it recenters. Takes a look over there. Yep. Yep. So you can use this to point your radar in a specific direction. Right. Yep. So, uh, and you can use the uh, the brass numbers down the bottom left to get it on a specific bearing. If you uh, say given uh, the direction of a bandit, yep. and then you can start looking for him. And then you can use your radar elevation control to make sure the numbers above and below your cursor are scanning the right uh, altitude block at that particular range. Right. So that's just up and down. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So but if, if hmm? the, the, this is the part, so if, if we know something's at our altitude, so if we know something's at uh, 30,000 feet, dead ahead of us yeah would we move this yellow thing into the middle but because it's a 30 I'm not sure where the up and down would be or so, yeah. so uh, if the number on top of the cursor is higher than the altitude you're interested in and the one below it is below set altitude, uh, yep then it it's, will cover it's it. okay got it yep, yep. Um, if you know specifically what altitude he's looking at you can yep. use a smaller bar scan and just uh, radar elevation up and down to get it to cover that distance so if you yeah. yep. set your bars to one or two whichever you, smallest one you can get uh, skip bars. two is the smallest yep yeah and uh, cursor up to the top third of the screen yep and uh, tell me what numbers you've got on your cursor right now. 45, 14. Yeah. So you're scanning between 45 and 14,000 feet currently. Uh, and now if, you, if you press your radar elevation control forward a couple of clicks. Uh, forward, what does that mean? I've just got up and down. Yeah. So uh, your left index finger, push it down. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is basically pointing the radar up and down within that um, altitude band. Gee, okay, that's sensitive. Yeah, it is very, very sensitive. So if I push too far down, it says minus 50 to minus 83. So, <laughs> so you're basically staring straight into the ground. Uh, you might still find something really, really close if it's basically directly underneath you. Yep. But um, so essentially at that range, um, you're basically not seeing anything because the top of your radar cone doesn't even reach that far. Understood. Okay. 
So I'll go back to four bar. Yep. And okay, got it. Also, double check your azimuth right now. Uh, azimuth meaning that's the thing going left to right, right? At 20 degrees? Yeah. So, yep. um, in track while scan, uh, the radar can only search uh, a finite volume, which is smaller than range while search. Yep. Um, and if you try to select a volume that's too big, it will shrink uh, the uh, other setting. So. If you try to set uh, your azimuth too high for the current number of bars, it will shrink the bars to allow you that azimuth, okay. and vice versa. It's so when, so when we set our bars to two, we had to cycle all the way through six, yep. and that was too big a volume for six bars at 40 degrees azimuth. Yep. So it shrunk the azimuth to allow us those six bars. Okay. So we can get back to our default settings again by just changing weapon and coming back to this one. Yeah. So if you go f uh, forward now to aim sevens. Yep. And then right back to. Yep. And we have 44 bars, 80. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or you can just manually set them back. Back, yeah. So, uh, hmm, why don't I break off somewhere and you come and try and find me on your, on your radar? How's that sound? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll go off to the south. To the south, yep. And uh, basically once you continue that orbit, once you're pointing south again, Yep. Uh, see if you can try and find me. Okay. I have no idea what's going to appear on my screen, but let's. I'll it'll just be uh, it'll be something similar to that AWACS. Okay. Decision making here that's a bit still a little bit weird. So I'm looking out to 80, 80 miles. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll be inside that. That's no problem. Um, I'm only scanning 40 degrees in front of me. So that's 20 degrees on either side. Is that right? Correct. So only when I'm, yeah, only when you're within that cone will I spot you. Correct. Okay. So would, would it, is this sort of the time where you should bring that 40 up a little bit just to? You could, or you could move the cursor off to one side. And click to like recenter the scan volume over there. Yeah, but if I've got no idea where you are, you're going to be somewhere in front of me. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll help you out by giving you bearing and range. Um, yeah. And also to prevent cheating, uh, just turn your data link off for a little bit. Oh, data link. Uh, data link is off. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got something on my screen, but I can't believe it's you because. No, you're not pointing I'm, anywhere I'm, near the right direction. Uh, I'm heading off west, yeah. Uh, you'll need to stop your contrails as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's all right. That'll give you some idea of where to point, yep. Um, yep. and then you can sort of find me on the radar. Okay. So at the moment, it says I've got an aircraft in front of me, but and that's at AWACS probably. Yep. So uh, can you figure out what uh, his bearing and range is to you? Um, so if you put the cursor directly over him and then read the uh, BRA. Uh, looking, by, uh, oh, I see, I now understand that, okay. Yeah, okay, so he's two, 251 off my nose, or if I want, yeah, that's right, that's pretty much in front of me. Yeah. Okay, and it's altitude, I can't really tell from that, can I? Um, not currently, but uh, what's his range? Uh, his range is 10 miles. Okay, hang on, there's some other badass coming up in front of me. Uh, let me see who this honcho is. There's some guy 20 miles in front of me. 
I believe that's you. Yep. So should I straighten up and head towards you? Yep. And uh, see if you can uh, figure out how to tell my bearing, my range, and my altitude. Okay, so you want, if I, uh, 170 of me, 167 seems to be moving a bit for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so you're 168 degrees, and I'm currently at 170, so you're right in front of me. Yeah. And you're 20 to 25 miles ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Unable to tell your altitude, though. I have so that. So cursor over me and click. Cursor over. Oh, and, and that click. will hook me. And then you'll be able to read either side of me. On the left will be my current speed in map. And on the right will be my altitude in thousands oh, of feet. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, so you're 29,000 at Mach 0.7. Yep. Woo! Right. Nice. And then uh, the stick out the front of me is my heading. Yeah, so you're heading away from me. Am I? Uh, yep. I've got a stick uh, pointing. Oh, no, wait, it moved. It's now it moved. No oh. I was heading away from you. Now what am I doing? I don't know. It's gone all yellow. I can't see what's going on. There's a whole lot of... Okay. So it's gone yellow because yes. now nah, the system has identified me as a friend. Uh, okay. Actually, no. It's yellow because I'm ambiguous. Because nah, the AWACS is telling you I'm a friend, but your system is still unsure. Right. But I should still have a stick. Uh, there is a stick and you're flying off to my right, so you... I can't tell you heading, but I'm at 179, so it looks like you're going pretty bad at this. What's that? West. Yep. Um, the one thing is, uh, you've now got a star. It looks like a star instead of a circle inside you. Yep, so that means I'm your primary track. So okay. if, you were to, if you had multiple tracks, I would be the first one to get a weapon. Right, okay. I'm still little... heading west. Uh, no, you're heading pretty much towards me now. Yep. At 29,000 feet, so you're going to pass just underneath me here, I believe. Mm-hmm. 1.6, but I don't have visual on you because you are 13 miles away. Very good. And if you want uh, a better uh, resolution, you can reduce the range on the scope. Reducing the range on the scope from 80... Down to like 20. Down to 20. Oh, yep. Yeah. There you go. So now you got it. And they're all crunched into the bottom. Yeah. So seven miles away. Luckily, still below me. <laughs> no visual. Oh, yeah. I see you there. Hello. Hello. Very good. Pretty. Nice. So you're boxed at the moment, and that star, I didn't i didn't realize when that star came in, but that was when I selected you with my cursor, right? Yep. You've... Um, am I turning to join you? you? I'll join on you. So if okay. you start a nice lazy left turn again. Lazy left turn. Okay, so I've obviously lost you because you're now behind me. Yeah. That's okay. I've still got you. Back to 80. And I'm still Mach 0.63. Nice. Because I'm looking at 34 to 26,000, had you come, had you been 
25,000, I wouldn't have seen you, is that right? Correct. Okay. So is, is it best to have the cursor up near the top of the screen because it gets a much wider wider cone of scanning? So it doesn't change the cone of scanning, it just tells right. you what it is at that range. Right. So if you move it down towards the bottom of, of the screen. Yep. Oh, because it's a cone. Yeah. Got it, okay. Yeah. So yep. closer in, now uh, you're only searching a much tighter uh, range of altitudes because yep. yeah the cone's getting tighter. Right, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Cool. So how would you feel about uh, trying to shoot down some actual hostiles? That sounds good. They won't have missiles, but they will have guns. Okay. Cool. So, dogfights, jets, Russian. Let's go, Sukhoi. Hmm. Actually, no, it's going to be big. 23. Yeah, I was hoping for helicopters. <laughs> 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 Helicopters are very difficult to get on radar. Oh, right. Because they're so tiny and close to yeah. the ground. There we go. Two rookies selected. Continue orbiting. Yep. So I'm in contact with the AWACS and he's just giving me a bra. 321 for 120 at 7,000. So from us on a bearing of 321 degrees for 120 yep. miles, there are bandits flying at 7,000 feet. Okay, so we want to head 321? Yep. Or well, roughly that direction. So Did we'll you say keep, keep 7,000 feet? 7,000 feet, yeah. Okay, so the 7,000 feet below us, or s they're at 7,000 feet? They're at 7,000 feet. Okay. So, push out the range to 160, just so that we can right. cover that uh, 120 miles yep. that he said. Yep. And then if you push the cursor up until its bra reads about 120, Yeah, uh, on the distance, yep. Yep. Oh, very good. Shit, there you are. And then uh, you can have a look at the uh, altitude range that you're scanning at that distance and make sure it covers 7,000 feet. Which it should. So it's 91 to 19. Is that right? To minus 18, sorry. To minus 18, there we go. So yeah, definitely covering 7,000 feet because it's looking into the ground. Uh, you probably won't pick up the targets um, that far out, just because they are fighter-sized targets. No, I've got them two, two red guys on the just come into screen. You didn't turn off your data link. Oh, didn't I? <laughs> okay, well that's all right. In, intro the data link then. So those two red guys are indeed the bad guys we're interested in. Um, no, it's just on the data link. Uh, if I press data link. And then I click off. Is that right? So, on the scratch pad on the on the UFC, does it say on three three something or whatever? Uh, when I press data link, all I've got is upper waypoint A three three six. On the screen to the left of that. To the left. Above there. the keypad. Uh, I've got a blank screen there at the moment. Uh, press data link again. Press data link again. Yep, I've got AIC, but nothing blank, blank above the calculator thing. Okay, then hit on. Also, hit roll on. out. On the Rolling out. Okay, on one two seven. Yep. Okay. Cool. 
So um, notice how those red diamonds are kind of small yes. and smaller than that circle down the bottom there? Yep. That means they're an off-board track. So someone else has detected those guys and is passing that data along to us, but yep. we haven't detected them ourselves yet, which is why they're right. small. Yep. Um, and they're red and diamonds because uh, the donor aircraft, the guy that tell, told us about them, has already identified them as hostile. Right. And then if you cursor over one of them, yep. uh, his current speed and altitude will pop up. Yeah, 6,000 feet at, is it Mach 1.2? Yes. Okay, he's moving it. Yep, he's bloody fast. And then if you uh, just click uh, somewhere near them, you'll sensor your radar scan on them. Yep. Um, so uh, we have the best chance of picking them up. Also, make sure your master arm is on. Master arm's on. Uh, by clicking, are you saying... Um, the same as designated. I've got my little yellow thing over the one of the red guys. Yep. And when I click it, nothing happens. Is that right? Uh, but that uh, line moving back and forth is now centered on them. Oh, you're saying yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they're passing within about 40 miles, actually uh, 80 miles now, so you can scale down to 80. There we go. Yeah. And we've only got one of them so far, but uh, the other guy will come here momentarily. Yep. He is. Hauling ass. There's still Mach 1.3 at 6,000 feet. Yep. So uh, just uh, push your radar down a bit further because uh, he's getting closer, so the radar needs to look down a bit further. Uh, should I blank out or push my radar down again? Oh. Left index. Field 1 yep. 1. Overlord 1 1. Bra 3 3 1 4 40 5. So 13 to minus, no, to minus 26 is all right? Yep, that's fine. That covers him nicely. Yep. And you'll know when your own radar has detected him because his icon will grow in size and probably change in shape and color. Okay. And when that happens, um, you'll go, uh, you'll just press your nose wheel steering button which will automatically hook him okay so that's uh, sort of a, a power user shortcut rather than slewing the cursor all the way over him um, you can uh, just nose wheel steering button and that will automatically hook the closest target right but he's not a target at the moment not a target at the moment no. okay should we be turning right a little bit yep we can turn right to put him roughly in the middle of our screen and also scale down because he's uh, close. Okay. Oh, he's gone yellow. Okay. So, nose wheel steering. Nose wheel steering. Oh, he's gone red. No, he's go. gone solid red. Yep. Cool. And uh, you should have a flashing box in your HUD now. I do, top right. Yep. So, that box, once we get uh, turned I around here. Three, three, one, four, yep. six. Need you anymore? Sorry. So once we get him in our HUD, that box will be directly over him. Okay. And he's actually going after the AWACS. That's a problem. Uh, he's no longer solid. Something's changed on my screen. Ah, uh, uh, you just lost him. You lost track of him. Okay. Push your radar down further. Radar down further. Alright, you got him? I think so. I'm trying to Nose wheel steering? Nose wheel steering, yeah. Uh, it's not it's not getting him. And he's pretty much right underneath us now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we need to uh, dive to get down to him. So All right. uh, if uh, you're comfortable with dogfighting or do you want me to take him? No, let's try. All right. Looking, yep. Uh, do you want to follow me? Uh, yeah, looking for you. I'm yeah, I got you. Yep. So, down we go. 
So now, if you castle switch up long, up long. Yep. so more than a second in release, you'll get uh, a dash circle in your HUD with LHAQ. Uh, I've got friend, I've got a dash circle, yeah. Yeah, so that is a, uh, a foresight track. Uh, so. Oh, you got two guys right in front of you. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for him. So, if you put a target in that dash circle, it will automatically lock him. Okay. Where are you, bitch? Can I try that? Because I can see them. Yep, go for it. Okay. Just don't shoot me. Okay, they're inside the cir dash circle. Yeah. But nothing, nothing locking or anything. Altitude. I'm hoping Altitude. I'm chasing the right people. I don't see anyone on my radar at the moment. I do. Bring... Okay. Oh, yeah. It's throwing off flares. Yep. And Fox 1. Oh, is he hit? No? Not yet. He's about to be. Oh, that must have hurt. That did hurt. Him. Yeah. I've got a guy right in front of me, but I... That's probably either me or the AWACS. Oh, yep, that's the AWACS. I see you. Okay, so don't go for this guy. Don't go for that guy. You. That's a friendly guy. Altitude. Altitude. Where's oh. this Is that you behind me? Yep. Okay. All good. <laughs> this is where I wish I could get to my radar quick, but my hands are a bit busy. <laughs> So that's what the HOTAS is for? Yep. Also, do you have your uh, helmet sight turned on yet? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So when you've got that dash, little dash circle in the HUD, you can yep. also look around and lock the radar. Okay. Oh, got him. So he's off at all. my 9 o'clock now. Uh, my 3 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see him. Yep. If you see him, take him. Uh, I'm not getting a lock, that's my problem. I've got a big circle, dash circle on my screen. Yep. Uh, uh, that guy's the AWACS. Is he low? Yep, he is very low. Where is he? Yep, so there's a guy right in front of you. Uh, but low, is that right? Uh, 6,000 feet. So he should be right in front of me. About 8,000, yes. Oh, I see him. Okay. Point so at him and you uh, should get a shoot, shoot, shoot. No, I don't get shoot, shoot, shoot. I think I might be in the wrong. I've got a big dash circle. What uh, weapon do you have selected? Uh, AB4? Yep. No shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, so castle Last up arm, long. And then put that little dash circle right on oh, it. I don't know. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I want shoot, shoot, shoot. So, did you castle up? Maybe four. It says visual at the bottom. Right, I'm taking him. Fox three. He's throwing flares. Yep. And he's dead. Oh, you got him. Yep. So, if you just uh, level out now. Altitude. So, altitude. What are you seeing in your? Is that a lock right on now? me? That did all, did all thing. Yes. Sorry. So, level out, and tell me what you're seeing in your head. They're all dead, by the way. Ah, there we go. Can you hear me now? Uh, yep. Cool. So, they're all dead. So, if yep. you just level out. And uh, tell me what you're seeing in your HUD. Uh, in my HUD. So, I've got a big dashed circle. 
Yeah. Going all the way around at the bottom, I'll get AB4 with mm -hmm. visual underneath it. Okay, and now if you uh, press castle switch up. Castle switch up. What do you get? Uh, a smaller circles appeared uh, with very small dashes in the middle of the screen. Yep. So that's what I was trying to get you to do. Oh, before. okay. I had to go up again. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, what's known as an ACM radar mode. So, air combat maneuvering. Um, also, uh, to slow it down, we don't have to go this yep. fast. Oh, yep. Yeah. So, um, this is basically a dogfight mode. So, any aircraft you put inside that little circle will. Uh, automatically be locked uh, okay and then uh, you can also look around with the helmet sight to lock a target I'll see it yep okay so if you want to try that out I'm just gonna yep. overtake you on the right Sorry yep. about that. and then you can try locking me up okay there we go yep. and then nose wheel steering to break the lock those will soon break the lock. All right. And then how to get it back? I'd have to go off you and back on or something. Yep. So uh, you should have. So you sh you're still locked. I think. There you go. It's off now. Yep. So you should have the little dash circle back. I do. Yep. So put that on me again. That is currently on you. You're in the middle of the dash circle right now. should be locking me up. I don't know why it's not. It did the first time. Mm. But then when I nose will steer it, it took took it off and it doesn't want to give it back. Okay. Yeah, it should be locking me. Uh, Nozzle steering again. Nozzle steering, yep. And now I've uh, lost my dash circle. Yep, so castle up. Castle up. And there, there you we go. go. Cool. So now uh, you've got a uh, little solid circle with some triangles on it. Yes? Uh, yeah, um, I've got a box on you. Yep. A friend underneath, and I have the circle with arrows. Yeah, three arrows yep. pointing. Oh, so. That circle with arrows is uh, your range indicator, and there's a little tick on there somewhere. It's probably somewhere up the top, yeah. pointing inwards. Uh, hang on, I'm just locking it again. I mean, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So the uh, triangle at the bottom center is the maximum range cube. So when that tick mark is around clockwise of that lower triangle you're too far away for the missile to ever catch me yeah. if it's uh, within the second tick counterclockwise from that that's the no escape range so you can fire within maximum range but I could dodge yeah. if you fire within no escape range then I will probably be hit right. and then the okay. last one up at the top is the minimum range. Okay. So if you try to fire too close, the missile won't be able to maneuver fast enough to intercept me. Okay, so I've got two at the bottom. Yeah. That's right. Um, how, how do I tell which one's the the in range one? So the one directly at six o'clock is always okay. going to be there uh, and always okay. going to be the maximum range one. And right. the one next to it changes yep. its position and it's the no escape key. And okay. it depends on what your jet is doing and what your target is doing. Right. So if both of you are really high and really fast towards each other, then the no escape range will be uh, a lot further. Yep. Um, if he's fast and you're slow uh, and like going sideways or going away from you, then the no escape range will be much, much shorter because he has a more of an advantage. Right. So you want to get those two close to the bottom two close together? Um, you get them close together by being really high and really fast towards your target. Yep. Um, 
basically you want to close within no escape range to be guaranteed to kill yep. or have the highest probability of kill i should say yep. and then uh, to the right underneath the uh, altitude is uh target range and closure data so that gives you the exact range to the current locked target and your closing velocity in knots right okay so negative is i'm falling away from you yep and then so we go if okay. i slow down now oh yeah i'm going on you yep and what's uh, the range 0.3 And uh, when you drop. put, and yep. you should see a little dot somewhere near the box around me. Uh, looking, looking. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I'm just breaking away because I'm going to hit the back here. Uh, oh, yeah. Coming. Uh, you don't have to be quite that close, so I'll just open the range. Yep. Uh, I have a dot right over you. Yeah. So if you put that dot within that range circle. That's that dot is the allowable steering cue. So it's basically telling you where to point the jet to give the missile the easiest time intercepting me. Because if you launch somewhere other than that dot, then the missile will have to make a big turn to get, intercept me. Let's see. So if I turn over here, that dot extends out in front of me. I let you go up my side my circle. The dot is just uh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So because I'm moving sideways relative to you now, it's basically telling you to point out ahead of me so yep. that the missile can basically fly to where I'm going to be. Okay. Cool. And when you've got that dot in the right place, you should get a shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah, it's flashing green shoot above my head here. Yeah. Yep. And uh, above my box should be shoot as well. It just says in LAR and yeah. friend underneath. Ah, oh, yeah. So in launch authority. So basically you're within the correct parameters to launch the missile. But it's yep. not going to tell you to shoot because I'm a friend. Yeah, okay. Cool. So you can uh, notice we're steering twice to kill the lock and the foresight. Yep. And now, if you press in to select sidewinders. Press in to select sidewinders. God, hang on. Uh, in meaning to the right? In meaning oh, down uh, into the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah got it. it. Yep. Yeah. So you've got a hiss and a little circle. I do. So. Either look at me with the helmet, or fly to put that circle in the HUD over the top of me. Yep. What does the did the tone change? It went dirt, 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 and now it's got a high pitch sound. Now yep. it's going dirt, 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 dirt. So when it goes dirt, 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 that means it thinks it sees something. And if you then press your cage uncage switch, which is the red switch on your throttle aft. High, tip, high pitched. Yep, so the seeker is now uncaged from your helmet and is yep. free to look wherever it wants to to track the target it thinks it sees. The right. high pitch means it does indeed see me. So if you were to pull the trigger now, then it would launch. Okay. It's quite an irritating sound. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and uh, now if you pull aft to get the guns, and you have to reset your PTT. There we go. I'm back, yep. So, guns now automatically puts the radar into the specific gun mode, which right. basically scans the entire volume of the HUD and will lock the first thing it sees within five miles, which it has yep. done. Yep. And now it's giving you a radar assisted gun sight. Right. So, now you've got the uh, same range information that you had before, and now if yep. you fly to put that pipper over the top of me within range yep you'll get uh in lives again yes and then if you pull the trigger yep. which you can do nah i don't want to do it 
Okay, hang on a second. Let me get back on. There we go. Yep. Oh, you're on smoking, you're smoking. Yep. <laughs> That's what happens when you riddle a jet with 20 mic mic. <laughs> Very good. That's pretty So awesome. how are you feeling about all that? Oh, there's so much there. I'm going to have to watch the video back a few yeah. times. Yeah. Sticking with me. <laughs> oh! So <Woo>! going <laughs> off. Eject! 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 Jump! Jump! Woo! Hey, what else? Just see in front of me. Oh, it's going off. I don't see a parachute. I don't see a parachute. I don't see a parachute. Is that you? That's your wing. <laughs> I'm trying to look for you. Are you should you be here somewhere? Yeah, I'm I'm way above you. Oh right. Oh, I see you. Hello. Uh, oh, that's pretty crazy. That gunning stuff's good fun. <laughs> yeah. Man, this this can get addictive. Yeah. <laughs> and um, right. I've actually got a, a whole playlist. Uh, saved on YouTube uh, with a lot of videos to teach um, air to air weapons that I'll uh, make yeah. you to. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of techniques here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what we covered today is just the basics of um, the systems. Yeah. Uh, we didn't uh, get into any tactics yet. Okay. And my. Ass is getting sore, so I'm gonna have to hop off. Yeah, yeah, so, all right. So, uh, what do you think of it? Yeah, that's pretty cool, but there's there's a lot, and I'm stalling. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, so I'll try and remember as much as I can. But there's a few where I'm still a little bit hazy. Mhm. Mm um. But yeah, I'll 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 watch the video, and I'm sure we'll, we'll come back again. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that was really cool. Yes. Spread some of this stuff around.